there's been a lot of focus on the coronavirus cases and deaths attributed to it in the state, and understandably so. But today, state officials and hospital leaders were all but begging people not to be afraid of going to the hospital for other potentially serious issues like heart attacks, abdominal infections, and strokes. Let me assure you, Massachusetts hospitals are open for business. We have the beds, we have the physicians, we have the nurses, we have the specialists, we have the resources to treat you. If they are recommended to come to the emergency department, to please do so. We want to care for you. We are here for you. The Boston Globe reports some area hospitals are seeing close to half the ER patients they usually do, even as total deaths in the state were 11 percent higher last month than average. We also learned more about the economic toll of the crisis today, with word the number of people who've lost their jobs since this all began is up to at least 26 and a half million. The House did pass another relief package this afternoon, but with virtually every business shut these days, it's hard to get your head around the financial facts. And as you can imagine, the hotel and hospitality industry is one of the hardest hit. According to the American Hotel and Lodging Association nationally, about 3.9 million jobs have been eliminated. It's costing the industry $500 million a day in lost room revenue. That's $3.5 billion weekly. According to the Massachusetts Lodging Association, between Boston and Cambridge, 18,000 hotel workers have been laid off and another 67,000 support workers have lost jobs. That's $4.6 million in lost room revenue a day. Most of the hotels in the Boston area are shut down completely, while a few remain open for non-recreational visitors. Some hotels are open for emergency purposes, like housing for frontline health care workers or airline workers. Normally, hotels would be at least 80 percent booked this time of year. Of those that remain open, visitors are in the single digits. Two hotels in the area that are open, but with few bookings, are the Charles Hotel in Cambridge, normally packed with power breakfast eaters at Henrietta's table. They reported just two guests over the weekend. And the Liberty Hotel, home of the old Charles Street Jail near Mass General in Boston, that's open too. And joining me now is the man who owns both of those hotels, Richard Friedman. Dick, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Nice to see you, Emily. So I wanted to start on a much bigger picture. Um, this is an international problem. All over the world, hotel, the hotel and hospitality industry is suffering disastrous repercussions. What have you and some of the other big hotel people and chains been talking about just for the present and then looking op at opening up, I mean, for the future, what it might look like? Well, that's a very difficult question because this is really... Nobody saw this coming and it came on like a hurricane, but without any without any advance warning. And so the industry is devastated. There's not any hotels basically around the country that are that are open. Very few. And so it's a disastrous situation for the owners. It's really disastrous for the workers. And every hotel company that I know of is laying off people, furloughing people, firing people. And it's a it's a it's a pandemic for us. In the, in the industry, but obviously for the people who are really sick. Now, obviously, the individual workers qualify for either unemployment or some of the uh, coronavirus pay. But what about the industry itself? I mean, can you individually apply for financial relief? I don't I don't think so. So far, I don't know of a way to do that. Um, the and by the way, for the workers, it's a short term thing for this unemployment compensation and the hotel industry and these workers won't come back. These hotels, when they reopen, aren't just going to open up and be, you know, back to normal. It's going to be a very slow buildup. So I think there's going to be a huge unemployment effect to these people who work so hard. Uh, but the industry is is staggered. Hotel companies are laying off at the corporate level, laying off hundreds and thousands of people and there's some relief from that people are getting from some lenders, but the government has not done enough for the hotel industry. Richard, you are sit on the board of the Four Seasons Hotel in New York, and that hosp that hotel has opened up essentially to uh, frontline healthcare workers. How is it determined which hotels become essentially housing for uh, you know people who are on the front lines? 
I've got to correct you a little bit. But I've, I've been on the board for many, many years, four seasons, but I stopped as of, oh, okay. uh, as of January 1st. But but each each hotel has four seasons in particular. Most of these companies are, are management companies, but there's individual owners. So the decisions are made at the individual owner level of whether they stay open or not and who can stay or not. So it's it's complicated. Uh, but the New York Hotel did open up for healthcare workers. Um, we have in in Boston, we have whatever occupancy that we have. Of course, the Liberty is right next to Mass General. The Four Seasons, which I developed, the new Four Seasons at One Dalton has some people in it who were there, people who were staying for medical treatment and stayed, stayed have stayed on. The Charles is extremely low occupancy, and we can't take guests unless they're uh, health workers or somebody's there for, you know, police or fire or safety. Well, as I said in my setup piece, most of the area hotels have shut down completely. How do you make the determination to stay open at all? Well, you can't stay open. You can't take a reservation. You can't call. You can't call the Charles Hotel and say, "I want to book a room for tonight." And so we can't take people because basically Governor Baker's order was to close the hotels, and we're honoring that. No, but I mean, they they are they they're open. I mean, we we call them both up, both of your hotels, and people answer the phone. But some some hotels aren't even doing that. Right. Some hotels are completely closed, and we've stayed open for people who nurses or doctors want to stay overnight or something like that some you know it's a terrible problem i talked to the attorney general about it you know sometimes these workers in the hospitals are working so hard they don't want to go home to their family in lowell or wherever they live and they've been in the they've been in intensive care all day long and they they want to stay in a hotel and be safe and be close to work so those are the kinds of people but it hasn't been as much of those as those people as we had expected frankly just on a practical level, I mean, you, you, you can't have the number of uh, house cleaning people. You can't have, you know, people who take care of the bathrooms. What do you do about that? I mean, you have to have some people on staff. Some, some people have to be helping out. Well, you have to make sure the workers are, are, are comfortable, right? And, and we don't force in, in anybody to work who doesn't want to work. And it's hazard pay. I mean, it's really difficult for people to do this work. Uh, but there's going to be lots of changes in the industry. You can't go into the room if guests are there. There's lots of things you have to do. We have to have very good hygiene things. Obviously, people need to wear masks, and we have to do social distancing for everybody, whether they're workers or not. Of course, hotels are as much in the hospitality, the food business these days, as they are in the sleeping business. I mean, what are you, what are you all talking about in terms of social distancing in a restaurant? What does that look like? Is there fewer tables? Uh, is there fewer selections on the menu? I mean, seriously, how, w what kinds of things are you talking about? Emily, that's a really good question. Look, everybody's going to simplify their menus. Everybody's going to have uh, spacing of some sort in bars and restaurants. You're going to have to do that. You're going to maybe take some tables out. I hope they don't have to put plastic or something or some kind of thing between tables. People do want to go out to eat, though. And so this will come back uh, when when it's safe. But right now, you know, if I want if I was going to go to a restaurant tonight, I'm not going to. But if I were to go to one, I'd be nervous myself at this at this peak. I think it's very important to, to remember we're only two months into this by summer, by the end of summer, it's four more months. And the pace of change of what's going on is very dramatic actually i think things will people become slightly more comfortable yeah. over time and we'll get a grip on this but right now it's a, it's a disaster and the, the the restaurant people just do an incredible job of takeout and doing takeout and serving people they're really wonderful people our restaurants in his table you mentioned the setup pieces yeah. completely closed and we've never closed in 30 years Richard, I've known you for many, many years, and I know a lot about you, and I know how philanthropic and generous you are. And I also know how much you really love the city of Boston. Just on a personal note, how, how has this felt to you, just to, just to see what's happening, not just to your industry, but to the city as a whole? Well, this is a very sad time for everybody. It's sad for the students. It's sad for the workers. It's sad for the hospitals. There's no winners in this thing. And I just think nobody saw this coming. I've never really, I, I guess I knew the word pandemic, but I don't really know what it meant. And uh, I think it's just a terribly sad time. And people are very uh, despondent. Nobody sees what's going to happen. Everybody's unsure. This is a very, a really miserable time for everybody.
Do you think people are going to start getting a little bit angry? I mean, we've seen that in some of some cities around the country, and there was some minor protests today up at Charlie Baker's house. But how much longer are people just going to accept the situation? Well, you see horrible things. You see gun sales going up. You see people protesting. Um, you see a lot of anger. And uh, I don't think the president administration has done much to help that. And so I think I think it is a very tense time. And uh, kids that are home, they don't know if they're going to go back to school or not, or when they're going to go to school, or whether they have a job or not. Uh, poor people have to pay their their mortgages and their rents, and it's, this is very 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 difficult. And so you know the the federal actions so far have done something to help people through the next few weeks, but this is not going to be over in a few weeks. So no. it's. It's, it's very um, upsetting. It is not. Well, Dick Friedman, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.